AI or artificial intelligence going to impact your eBay reselling business? Whether you are a one person shop, i.e. you source everything, you photograph everything, you list everything, you ship everything, you store everything, or whether you have one or two or 10 or 20 employees, <clears throat> how is AI going to uh, impact your eBay business? How is it gonna affect it? Do you think it's going to have a negative impact, positive, no impact? So this is still a relatively new idea. AI in general, of course, is pretty new to our lives um, and it hasn't been unleashed on resellers for eBay or Amazon. I'm talking about eBay mostly, but I'm also talking a little bit about Amazon. Um, by the way, I'm Andrew from 510 Books. I'm in my bookstore here. Um, just finishing up for this morning. Uh, so how do you think it's gonna impact your business? This is just my initial, these are my initial thoughts, my reaction to it. Uh, I may be right or wrong, but I've been reselling on Amazon uh, and eBay for 10 years. So uh, I've been around the block <laughs> and I've done both. Uh, you know, I had almost 3000 items in FBA for Amazon. I now have 2200 items in eBay. So I'm not a massive seller, but I'm big enough uh, to, you know, to have, I think a say in it, or at least have some sort of educated opinions on it. So AI uh, potentially can do a lot of things for resellers, um, especially, well, here's my take, right? I mean, I was gonna say, especially on eBay, or especially on Amazon, but potentially on eBay as well. So there, so the difference is, right, between Amazon and eBay, yes, you can upload photos to Amazon. However, comma, does anyone even look at them? My 10 years of selling on Amazon, it doesn't matter if you have photos unless you are selling some sort of rare collectible book. So I sell books. If you're new to my channel, I sell books and media. Most of what I sell on, the only things I sell on Amazon are books and CDs. And mostly what I sell on eBay are books, CDs, DVDs, and then other random media items like VHS tapes, like cassette tapes, like some records here and there, um, you know, laser disc, sort of random stuff, right? Um, but for the most part, I resell online are books, CDs, and DVDs. Of course, you throw in Blu-rays, 4K, that kind of stuff, but movies, right? Or, you know, discs. Um, So what I'm gonna talk about is how it impacts that, right? Cause I don't sell clothes or shoes or I don't know, furniture or, or whatever, jewelry, soaps, anything, anything else. So I, I stick to my lane. I know it really well. I really love books. I really love music. I really love movies, TV shows. So I stick to that, what I know and what I love. Um, so I don't know, you know, you can apply some of this stuff to your genre if you're not in my book and media or physical media genre. But when it comes to books, for instance, here I am surrounded by books. Um, on eBay, I mostly sell books that are more like uh, more collectible, more rare, older, vintage, that kind of stuff. Um, so they typically require bare minimum five or six photos, often ten to twenty photos, uh, if it's something that has to do with, you know, the condition, the damage, or, or, or things I need to show, like maybe photographs, maybe uh, drawings, illustrations, signatures, um, cool artwork, whatever it is, right? So uh, I end up taking, you know, probably on average, like eight photos per collectible book. Sometimes I'll list books that are not so, so are, are not collectible, but they make more sense to sell it on on eBay over Amazon. Amazon has more stuff that is has barcodes, has ISBN, is newer over the last couple of decades. Um, and yeah, and so I don't ever take photos for Amazon, but I do for eBay. That's one difference, right? Another thing is that um, because you don't have the photos, Amazon is largely, let me just show you, is largely uh, based on, um, See where I'm gonna put this. 
based on uh, price first. So here's an example of a book, great writing, a reader for writers, random book. Uh, I think I actually sold it on Amazon. Um, and so when you go into the the app, you know some people are going to be on their on their lap or on their laptop or their desktop, but a lot of people are buying stuff on Amazon off of their phones, so they're going to be using the app. And when you pull up this one with the barcode, whatever, tap it, type it in. Um, it's going to show the it's going to show the condition. Of course, the the title of the <clears throat> of the book, but then as you go down, all you see are um, the condition. And also, also by the way. I guess I should have mentioned it. I sell used items. I don't sell. I rarely have new stuff. Sometimes I'll come across sealed DVDs, sealed CDs, um, and books that appear to be brand new. I never say they're new, though. I might say that they're, you know, very good condition, like new, stuff like that. But I don't sell new stuff. So, yes, price, or condition price, and then... Um, so this one, they show you free delivery if, if there's free delivery. Um, but yeah, so that, those are the two biggest ones on Amazon is price and condition. Now, I would contend that most people just are, are, are looking at um, price, especially when it comes to FBA. These are all, uh, let's see. Yeah, these are all merchant fulfilled offers. So these are sold by the people that listed it not being... Uh, or I'm sorry, shipped by the people that are listing it, not being stored and shipped by Amazon FBA. Because when it F- comes to comes to FBA, um, you know, mostly it's just going to be price with a minor consideration of of condition. But when it comes to uh, merchant fulfilled, it's price number one, condition number two, and then location for some people. So, as an example, this is Thrift Books of Atlanta. If you live in California, you know it's going to take a little bit longer to get the book. But if you live you know, in Georgia or a state, one one or two states over, you know, it's going to take as long. So that's another consideration as well, but there's no photos. Um, so my point is when you, then when you go over to eBay, so I put in the same book, right? Great writing, a reader, re, reader for writers. This is what pops up. So there's one for eight bucks. So, so the first things you see are, well, I would say the first thing you see are the photos, right? So, um, but then you have the price, whether it's free shipping, whether you have free um, returns, that kind of thing. But the photos play a big part. However, my point is right now, so out of all of these, there's only two where someone actually took photos, right? You can tell right here, here's photos that someone took and here's photos that someone took, but everything else um, is a stock image, right? Here's a stock image, whoops, Better, Better World Books. This is a stock image. Um, so so I would contend that even without AI, it's sort of already happening where people, uh, big sellers, um, are not taking photos. They're not taking photos of the item, you know, not even one photo. Forget about five photos or six photos or seven or eight or ten. Um, they're using a stock image or, I mean, because this, this does not say stock image, but I'm pretty sure it is. And even if it's not a stock image... Uh, it doesn't show anything other than the than the cover, right? So you don't know the condition. Um, if there's anything wrong with it. But my point is, if you take a book, whatever it is, and you say, I'm going to sell this book on eBay, sell it on Amazon, you just, um, well, you just scan the barcode, put it in, you can do it straight into Amazon, right? And just list it right away, Merchant Fulfilled. Um, or on eBay, you're going to take some photos, I would hope you would, and then you're going to list it, right? So my point is, when it comes to AI and eBay, they're, um, like right now, without AI, there's a lot of big eBay sellers. When I mean big, I mean they have big, you know, they have, they have lots of inventory. They have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of items. And even the in-between ones that have, you know, 30,000, 40,000, they're already not taking photos. So that's already being done, right? Just like Amazon. Now you have AI come in. How is AI going to take a photo for you? Uh, unless you are taking a book and just placing it underneath a camera on a table, you know, pushing a button and then it snaps it for you. The one photo, uh, and then AI scans the book, 
figures out what it's called, fills in all of the details you want, the, um, of course, the, the title, the description, the, um, I'm blanking on what they're called right now, guys, but all of the information that you put in, you know, hardback or paperback, the title, the author, the genre, the topic, uh, the year it was printed, um, all of those item specifics. There you go. I knew it would come to me. All those item specifics, let's say it does all that for you and then can immediately list it and have it go live. That's great, but that's already being done. So there's no difference, right? They're already listing stuff super fast with one photo or a stock image or no photo. <laughs> there's even, uh, I'm pretty sure there, yeah, look, no image here. No image here. So that's already being done. So AI is not going to, not going to change that other than because because you can already um list an item you know quickly on ebay uh without having to take a photo and you can just especially the ones that have barcodes that's why a lot of these big sellers want to just sell the ones with barcodes because it fills in all the information for you and then you just list it without a photo with one photo um with a stock image now could ai potentially do it faster yes they, it could be set up to where they could do it faster. But again, they're not going to take a bunch of photos. So when my point is that when you... So right now, we're already, as, as book and media sellers, I'm already having to compete against big sellers that don't... Um, that don't take, you know, a bunch of photos, that don't put the right keywords in the titles. So AI is not going to make much of a difference there, right? It's just going to if it becomes like a lot of people using AI for listing on eBay, it just means that they're going to be listing the crap that's not going for much money. But when you come to a, an item like this, hold on. So here's an example. This is a movie, a real movie called The Corn Dog Man. I have it on DVD. I watched it. It's 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 funny. Uh, very unique um, independent film that came out in 2004. 20 years old, but the item, as you can see, it goes for $40 and up. The cheapest one right now is $38.98. It goes up to $40. $90, $73, $150. This one claims it's new. This is the only one that has a stock photo, but it's going for way too much money. So my point is, these first three, and that price is way too high based on the other one. So again, you got to compete on price, not just photos, um, and condition as well on eBay. Um, my point is that this one here is probably going to get a sale, although it does have a little sticker there, but that's probably not that big a deal. <clears throat> um, versus, uh, or you know, that the, the higher end items, the higher end media items, are typically going to have photos and images. So when you go here, see solds. There's two that sold, and both of them, by the way, they shouldn't have done an auction on this. This one's over twenty seven ninety five. And this one has photos. It's only got three, but you don't need that many. Front and the back and the um, DVD. And this one as well, but this was an auction. So of course that one sold. Actually, this one only has one photo, which is not enough. Um, but when it comes to higher priced, more valuable, harder to find rare items, whether it's a book, whether it's a CD, whether it's a DVD in my niche, um, <clears throat> having AI is not going to help you. It's going to help you list quicker, but you're you're not going to have the right keywords in the title. You're not going to have um, the right item specifics. Um, and it might get really good at it, but it's still going to miss stuff all the time because it's a computer and not a human. And of course, it's not going to take, unless you have a robot, which is a whole nother conversation, right? <laughs> unless you have a robot doing the work for you who is can pick up uh, DVDs and take photos of them and open them and take out the disc and all that kind of stuff, which is another conversation that if we get to that point, um, yeah, that's crazy. But, uh, <laughs> cause then you just have to buy the robot and the robot just does it all for you. Uh, but that's not what this video is about. We're not there yet. Um, but maybe not that far away. So, uh, so for, so for unique stuff, it's gonna, AI is not going to do much other than speed up the general process of let's take like the corn dog man DVD. You put it down there. It takes one photo of it, puts everything that's in the eBay 
that matches an eBay, you know, the title and all that stuff. And then you can go in and take a look at it, right? So you can maybe use it as like setting up the listings for you, but you still have to take more photos. If you want to sell the Corn Dog Man DVD, you're probably going to want to show the front and back, maybe even take a picture of the spine, um, which is what I do, and take a picture of the the top of the DVD, and then you may or may not want to take a picture of the actual condition of the disc. I don't usually do that. I rarely ever do that. Um, and, you know, then you're... You got to make sure you have the keywords, you know, put some, maybe some actors names in there, independent film, whatever it is. Um, so I don't think initially anyway, AI is going to have much of an impact on us eBay resellers, especially um, books and media. And I think it applies to most things that people sell because uh, they can't take the pictures for you. Um, and it can, while it can fill out a lot of the information, it's not going to do a good job like a human will. So you know, if you're focusing on items that are thirty dollars and up in value uh, versus you know five to let's say fifteen bucks, um, you're it's okay to spend more time because uh, you want to put the right keywords, you want to sell it because it's going to sell for more money versus you're selling something for eight ninety nine plus shipping, but you're selling something for thirty nine ninety nine plus shipping. You want to make sure you have the keywords in there, good photos. Uh, item specifics, accurate description, anything, any damages, anything like that. So, so stick to number one. I mean, everybody does business different, right? Some people sell the lower end stuff, lower profit stuff. Now, if that's your thing, high volume, low profit, great. AI is probably going to help, but I'm not going to try to compete with them. I'm competing with people that are selling more rare stuff in general, right? I'm funneling my business down to picking the better stuff. So when it comes to books, AI is not going to be able to do much for me on a book from 1943 that I have to take, you know, 12 pictures of, I have to do some research on it, all that kind of stuff. It it may or may not be able to put a basic listing up and then I can plug the holes, but again, I'm going to have to take the photos. It's kind of like having a virtual assistant who doesn't physically have the books in their possession, so they can't take the pictures, so I have to take the pictures and then send the pictures to them and then they have to do the research, but they don't have the book right in front of them. So then they can't describe any blemishes. It it's, doesn't really work as well. It might work for stuff that's brand new, um, that's easy to explain. But again, you know, you're still doing the photos. So I don't think AI is gonna have much of an impact. That's my hot take on this. Let me know what you think. Um, stick to the more rare stuff, the higher value stuff, and the competition falls off, right? And then on eBay, then you can compete on price, condition, um, and the quality photos you take. And of course, being found, because people are gonna search the corn dog man, but what if someone searches, you know, one of the main actors, the main actor in there is pretty well known. If you put his name in the in the search term, maybe they weren't looking for the corn dog. I mean, in the title, maybe they weren't looking for the corn dog man, but they were looking for stuff that he was in and they didn't know about it. But AI wouldn't do that, you know, or or even a, a seller that doesn't know what they're doing wouldn't do that. So those are the things to consider. Um, also, maybe someone's looking for independent film from the early two thousands. Well, maybe independent film and it has two thousand four in there. You know, so things like that, right? Keywords are, are the most are one of the most important things to sell your actual items that are on eBay. So, guys, let me know what you think. This was just my initial reaction. Um, I don't think we have too much to worry about when it comes to that. As long as you're listing quality items, i.e., stuff that people want. When I say quality, stuff that people want. It's going for enough profit for you. If you're doing low profit items, you're just gonna have to sell more of them and list more of them, which that's fine if that's your thing. But as long as it's quality items, right? Taking quality photos, putting the right keywords in the uh, um, in the title, item specifics, describing the item if there's any damage to it, <clears throat> um, all that stuff. All right, guys, let me know what you think. See you in the next video.